welcome to another edition of Health Matters. Because your health matters, we here are committed to bringing you quality programming regarding several different subject matters so that you have information that gives you power to make better, greater, healthy living style choices. My name is Anna Marie Sinatra, and I am a coach, a consultant, a motivational speaker, trainer, workshop leader, and my business is Sinatra Solutions. You can find me on the website at sinatrasolutions.com. You can email me at annamarie at sinatrasolutions.com because I absolutely love hearing from you. I enjoy your phone calls, your emails, letting us know what subject matter you want to hear about, what's important to you. And I also just enjoy hearing your feedback. I love partnering with you to catapult you to the next level in whatever it is you're up to. So whether it's your personal life, your business life, your organizational life, we here at Sinatra Solutions can partner with you to help to take you to the next level. I am so excited today to be providing you with another wonderful program that is in part sponsored by Western New York MRI. You've um, seen programs that we've taped from their location, as well as doing roundtable discussions regarding their business. They are the most cutting edge, uh, diagnostical equipment that you could want and hope for because they can go in and find out what's going on in your body in, a, in an expertise way. So we're very grateful for their commitment to the community and providing such a service. So you always want to give them a call because they're helping to make this show possible. I also want to thank Melinda from Renaissance Hair Salon who uses all natural products to help bring out your natural beauty. As you always hear me speaking about the importance of watching what we put in our body as well as what we put on our body. It's a lot of information. It's a lot of uh, good things that we can do. And there's only one way to start, and that's to start. You know, I've heard the joke, how do you eat an elephant? Well, one bite at a time. So how do we get a healthier life? Uh, style? How do we learn information to give us choices when we're faced with an injury? By tuning into this program, getting your pens and papers ready, and begin today to make just one small choice, one difference that will help to give you the power to have a great healthy lifestyle. We are sitting inside of this amazing, beautiful, gorgeous building. It is just such a thrill to be here. Folks, if for no other reason, you got to come in and say hello to the doctor because this is just beautiful. I'm going to call this the grand waiting room. It is just absolutely incredible. And Dr. William Capicato is a orthopedic spine surgeon. He has the largest disc replacement practice in the country, and he has more than 23 years of experience. He also is a board certified spinal surgeon. Thank you so much, doctor, for having us here. Well, thank you for that introduction. You make me blush. <laughs> Just a little bit. That's okay. We could, we've got some editing we could do with that. Um, I'd like you to tell, we've got some great props here. I've learned so much already. And our whole goal is to educate the community so that they can understand and know some of the options that are out there for them. And so when, when we're talking about these, I'm going to let you talk about some of this old time stuff that you were telling me and, and explain what the difference is between the spinal fusion and the artificial disc replacement. Sure. Um, I'd like to uh, step back just a little bit. Most of us know people that have an artificial hip or an artificial knee uh, maybe our uh, grandmothers or aunts or uncles. Um, however, what most people don't know is that before there were artificial hips and artificial knees, people that suffered severe pain got uh, underwent operation called knee fusions or hip fusions. Yes. Now, they were good operations because they relieved pain, but the problem is they would like weld the knee together or weld the hip. and they limited motion. 
So uh, in the 1960s and 70s and out throughout the 80s, the uh, total hip replacement uh, and total knee replacement uh, uh, evolved. And now um, here we are in 2008, the, uh, uh, these operations are very commonplace. I have a <clears throat> an example of an artificial hip hip replacement, um, and this is uh, uh, made of a, a metal alloy. This one happens to have a ceramic head, and then the, the cup is made of metal with a uh, polyethylene liner, and then this helps the hip to move. Unlike before when you were showing me the older one where it would just be fused in place and there would be restriction on the mobility. Correct. Then you couldn't, the hip couldn't move. You'd have to use your spine to, and your knee to help move. The other <coughs> um, model I have is this is an, a knee replacement. And this is the part that goes on the femur, which is the thigh bone. And this is the part that goes on the uh, tibia or the shin bone. And these are the actual parts that goes inside of a person's body. Yes, that's correct. And this allows, I'll turn this from the side, um, if, the, if a person was standing uh, straight, uh, it would look like this. And as they bent their knee and brought their knee up towards their buttock, or uh, it would slide this way. Or if they sat down, they would, th the thigh would bend. So this uh, was an evolution of technology from going to welding or fusing bones together, such as in the, in the knee or the hip, to having motion, artificial joint replacements. And a good example of that, too, is what you were showing me in the back here, how in the past they used to fuse things together. This I found very interesting. Yes. Um, this is a model that I use in my office of a spinal fusion, a, a low back spinal fusion. We call this the lumbar spine or a lumbar spinal fusion. And the classic fusion um, is, done, is performed through an incision on the back. It has uh, uh, screws and rods that are made of titanium. And also there's uh, struts, uh, the discs are taken out and struts of bone or other types of material are placed between the vertebra. And this is an operation that is the, the classic operation uh, for uh, painful discs. It works. However, it does have some negative aspects to it. <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, the patient will lose motion. You can see the upper part of the spine moves. And that's supposed to simulate normal motion. Well, the bottom part that's fused together is pretty much welded. That doesn't move. So if you had this operation, it could take away a lot of your pain. However, it also ends up restricting your motion. And then there's, there's other issues or nuances about, hip, about, I'm sorry, about spinal fusions. Uh, uh, patients that are smokers may not uh, heal as well. Um, other issues regarding uh, when, a, when a fusion is done, the joint next to it, uh, and in this case would be the disc next to it, has to take up more stress. Well, the joint, the disc or joint next to the fusion can go on to accelerated deterioration, and then the patient would need another fusion. And, and you also have, while you're talking, I'm wondering if you could hold up the newer, the way that you're doing it now, too, so we can get a visual of that, too. The newer technology is that of an artificial disc replacement. And if you kind of look at these together, um, the, the bottom of the artificial disc replacement looks very similar to the bottom of the artificial knee replacement. Yeah, I see that. And... This is implanted through an incision, a small incision in the abdomen. Um, I work with a, a team of surgeons to do this, either, uh, Dr. Michael Pell or Dr. Timothy, Timothy Rasmussen, both excellent surgeons, and we do these surgeries together. And um, uh, we'll take the disc, the entire disc out from the front and then replace it with this disc made of uh, a metal alloy and polyethylene. High poly high density polyethylene. And once again, you are actually showing us the pieces that actually go right inside the body. Yes, yes. I just find this so incredible. And <laughs> as you can see, um, it moves. This would be bending forward, bending backward, bending to the right and left, and a bit of rotary, mo rotary motion. Um, now, one may say, well, geez, that's not much motion, but there are five discs in the lumbar spine. And if each one moves this much, well, it's like a fishing rod or a bicycle chain. Exactly. Unlike when you're fusing them together, the motion is really restricted. Yes. 
the um, the advantage of this operation is number one it preserves motion um, the other issue is that there's when we put an artificial disc in the discs next to the next to the replacement do not take up increased stress so statistically people should not be coming back for additional surgeries at the levels next to the artificial disc replacement compared to the fusion. That is pretty incredible. This is wonderful that we have such great advancements in the medical field. This is so helpful. It is. The, uh, uh, for smokers in particular, uh, we, do have, uh, we do have the challenge of uh, the patient that, that is a smoker um, statistically has more of a chance of not healing the fusion. There's numerous reasons why, but th those are the basic numbers compared to a, a, a smoker and non-smoker. However, smokers and non-smokers heal the same with a disc replacement. So they, they, that um, other variable of smoking is taken out of the equation when a patient has a disc replacement. The uh, hospitalization time with an artificial disc uh, is, is usually two or three days with a spinal fusion uh, uh, can be four, seven to ten days depending on the size of the operation. So if someone is, uh, somebody watching today is in a lot of pain and has maybe even had a spinal fusion in the past, are they able to come to you to talk about uh, doing something different or is it too late for them? Um, at the levels that are, it, well, it depends on the type of fusion that they've had. Um, However, there are patients that have fusions that, as we discussed earlier, will go on and start to have pain out of the next disc. Mm -hmm. uh, those patients would be a candidate for an artificial disc replacement at the level next to the fusion. So even if they've had a fusion and they're having pain today, they can come and talk with you to see what possibilities exist for them. And, and also, too, if you've used traditional, uh, you are trying to avoid surgery, maybe you have a lot of back pain in your neck or your lower back anywhere, and you've used different things to try to get rid of that, physical therapy, massage therapy, uh, acupuncture, chiropractic, all those things aren't helping because we always want to try non-surgical ways first. Then we can explore these options. The, these, are, these are surgical alternatives. Um, uh, uh, a patient should not enter into surgery uh, um, unless they've gone through a reasonable period of time to try to recover from the injury, um, modify their lifestyle, as you're saying, either treat with a physical therapist or a chiropractor. Perhaps they may be candidates for injection therapy. Um, and then if it doesn't, if all else fails and their pain is moderately severe to severe, in interfering with their life, perhaps they can't work, they can't sleep, uh, then surgery would be a consideration. Well, you've really broken that down for us quite well. I really appreciate that. So you've heard it, you've heard it, folks. If you're in a lot of pain, you have back pain, you have neck pain, there is alternatives. The advancements that the medical field is, is experiencing is just, it's, it's so exciting to me because I know so many people suffer with back pain and uh, neck pain. And I just encourage you, if you're listening today, to call Dr. Capicato. Um, the information's at the bottom of the screen and will continue to be at the bottom of the screen intermitt intermittently. And, uh, know that there is some possibility for you to get relieved of that pain and to get your mobility back and to have a healthy, healthy, full lifestyle. So doctor, tell us about the cervical uh, disc replacements as we're looking at here. First, I wanted to show you a model uh, that I use this with my patients. This is a model of a cervical fusion. So um, similar to our patient, George, uh, the classic operation would be to make an incision on the front of the neck and then take the discs out and put um, a device to fuse the uh, vertebra together with a plate and screws. And that's an operation that works and does take away pain. However, like the lumbar operation, we have to be concerned, is it going to heal or not? There's an added risk for a, a smoker. And then we have the other issues regarding the potential for the discs above and below to go on to deterioration and require another surgery. So those are, those are big challenges as we look at, the, at a patient and treating them medically 
We just want to make them better the first time. The artificial disc replacement is actually, as we say, a mini-me of the lumbar. And if you look at it, and I, this one I can take apart because it's magnetized, it's about, it's actually about the size of my thumbnail. Wow. And this is an actual prosthesis that we use in the operating room. And once again, it's made of metal and uh, polyethylene, and it allows the neck to move. So if from the side, you can move up and down, okay? And you can turn and, and also lateral flexion. So this is a, um, a very large uh, uh, step in the evolution of treatment of injured discs. And I believe that this will be with us for a long time. That's pretty incredible. And you are now, we're going to go into the doctor's examining room and talk to actually two patients, one who has had the cervical disc repla replacement and one who's had the lumbar disc replacement. So stay tuned and make sure you have those pens and papers ready to take down this great information. I am standing inside of one of Dr. Capicato's examining rooms. And this has just been such a, a great tour of this awesome building. And now we get the privilege of being inside an examining room with one of his patients who's going to even explain to us a little bit more about all what you've been viewing so far. Dr. Capicato, tell us a little bit about your patient and introduce her. Uh, this is Cheryl Weidman. Uh, Cheryl is a certified nursing assistant and she suffered an injury to her lumbar spine with a disc herniation at the bottom level, which we call L5-S1. And uh, we were talking a little bit earlier, and you were telling me about all the things that you did before um, you actually came to Dr. Capicato. So tell me a little bit about your injury and what was happening. I just had a lot of pain from the accident, and I went to physical therapy. I had a chiropractor and injections to my back which none of them. And none of it was helping. No. You were still in pain? Yes. Yeah, and the doctor had said that you were having trouble sleeping, walking, doing anything. Right, just about. right. And then what happened? I had surgery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. When she came to you, what? how did that all come about? Well, uh, I had actually had treated Cheryl a number of years ago for another injury, and uh, a different um, uh, from her uh, present injury. And... Um, when she came to me, she was in uh, pretty dire straits. Uh, she said she had severe pain, uh, was not able to work, she couldn't sit for periods of time, couldn't stand, couldn't sleep at night, and all the non-operative or conservative mm. methods of treatment didn't work. So we went on the uh, direction of a surgical direction, and the alternatives were to do the classic operation of doing a spinal fusion right. uh, with rods and screws, or using the more new technology and performing an artificial disc replacement. And uh, Cheryl's a young lady, and she wants to stay active and busy, uh, and she chose an artificial disc replacement as an alternative to a spinal fusion. And I think you have something like that right up on the screen now, correct? Yes. Where people could actually get a chance to see what's actually happening here. Yes, this, this is uh, a side x-ray, or what we call in medicine a lateral x-ray of Cheryl's spine. And right down in through here, uh, what we see is the artificial disc replacement, mm -hmm. and that's at the bottom level. And that's allowed her to uh, return to a fairly vigorous lifestyle. She's back working as a certified nursing assistant. And as you see, she was good enough to come, and come from work today. Yeah, I thank you so much for that. So Cheryl, how long was it before you came to, to the doctor um, and got this relief? How long were you suffering? Probably about three to four months. Wow. Wow, and then after the surgery? Uh, a lot better. Yeah, a lot better. yeah. What's, yeah. Is it any restrictions still or any pain? Well, it's not a lot of pain, not a lot of heavy lifting like right away, but I'm working there gradually, getting back to where I was. Because this is just recent, right? How long ago was your surgery? It's been a year. About a year. That's yeah. pretty recent.
awesome yeah. for a spine surgery. Yeah, yeah it awesome. Is. So you got some new parts. Did, did he give you like a hundred thousand mile warranty on this or what? <laughs> <laughs> he just helped me to be safe. Ah, that's, that's, be that's safe. incredible. Yeah. And so you, but you do notice the difference. Oh yeah, 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 yes, very much, very oh. much. Anything else you want to say about that? Um, that I would recommend anybody to get it uh, that needs it because it does help. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, doctor, I've uh, have experienced some injuries my own self, and then have a lot of friends and business associates as well who suffer. And it's the programs like these are so good because we're giving people information, which is then power, so that you have choices. You know, if you're sitting home and you're and you're watching this program, and you've been suffering from a back injury, and in a little while we're going to talk to someone that has a neck injury as well. You know that there is options for you. This has been so incredible as we talked about the infusion versus the replacement. Yes, the, uh, the technology um, has been around uh, in Europe and in other parts of the world for a little over 20 years. Um, the FDA um, uh, approved lumbar replacements uh, in the United States in late 2004, I believe. Wow. Um, the first prosthesis on, on the market was a little controversial, and we decided not to use that and to wait for the second generation of prostheses to come out, which is uh, what Cheryl has. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, a very safe prosthesis. It's uh, uh, time tested and uh, really should last forever. That's incredible. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And now, Dr. Capicato, you're going to introduce us to someone who had a cervical disc replacement. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yes. I'm learning so much today. I absolutely love doing this. It's incredible. Yes. Tell me a little about a little bit what's happened in this gentleman's uh, Mr. Uh, George uh, Velasquez uh, suffered uh, an injury uh, at work. It's a little complicated, uh, uh, and I'll let him explain that to you. And he had suffered severe pain in his neck and in his arm. Um, similar to uh, my patient Cheryl, uh, terrible pain to the point uh, could not work could not sleep, arms were weak, terrible neck pain, terrible headaches, uh, and other conservative measures, which uh, as a surgeon I would call non-operative measures, right. did, were not successful in making him better. Right. Uh, he had an MRI that showed he had herniated discs, and uh, uh, Mr. Velasquez realized that he needed to have something done surgically. And we went through the same issues with him. Uh, he's a young man, wants to go back to work, uh, needs to provide uh, for himself uh, and his family, and uh, he elected to have an artificial disc replacement as an alternative to a spinal fusion, which is the classic operation. Right. And, and before you got to that point, thank you, George, for coming and helping to educate our viewers today because this is great information. So before you got to that point, you were trying some traditional non-surgical ways to heal. Yes, I went to a chiropractor, tried that out for a while, and it, it helped a little bit, but it still, I still had to have uh, painkillers. And I wanted to be able to be a, be a person that didn't have to take pain pills. And uh, so I wanted to try something else. So through a friend, I heard about Dr. Capicato, and I came to him, and then we made the decision to do the disc replacement. So you were actually, you were working, but you were rear-ended. I was, I was rear-ended at work. I was on, on my way back to work, and it was during our, uh, my lunch hour. And uh, at that point is when I realized I had whiplash. Ended up in the emergency room, neck swollen, shoulder swollen. Two weeks later, I went back to work. But it just never went away. It got worse and worse and worse. So I knew I had to have something done because it wasn't normal. It was just always bothering me. I thought it would be like a sore ankle or something like that, that it just go away, but it never did. So as time went on, came to Dr. Capicato through a friend, and she also had surgery with Dr. Capicato, and it was successful. So I wanted to go with, with a person that could get me back to work. So I enjoyed my job, good place to work. So I wanted to have someone to be able to put me back at work. That's pretty incredible. And so how was the surgery? After the surgery, actually after the first day, I felt great. I felt the immediate difference. I didn't wow. have any, any headaches. Uh, the, the pain going through my arm, going up my, up, up my uh, back to my, my uh, head, all those things were gone the first day I felt it. 
So at first I thought, well, maybe it's the medication. But as time went on, I found that it, it was the operation itself that helped me. You must be so excited. Oh, I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Cheryl, too. Did you get a 100,000-mile uh, warranty with these new parts? Lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Very good answer. Very good answer. That's awesome. I think it will last them a lifetime. I really do. I, I, um, similar to hip and knee replacements, the longevity of the replacements uh, has been improving over the years. And the materials used for the artificial disc are the same as in an artificial hip and an, and an artificial knee. And they last a long time. So I'm very optimistic that this will last them pretty much forever. That's absolutely incredible. Okay. Well, so once again, we're giving you the information to give you the power so that you can get to your doctors to ask the questions to get you to the doctor to, to get new replacement parts rather than fusion as a possibility so that you could then um, enjoy your life fully. And George, we just thank you so much for coming and sharing, you know, you are very much of an encouragement to others who are listening. It was a pleasure, especially if someone else can have this done and uh, be giving their life back to them. It's a, it's a good uh, way to go. Um, unlike Cheryl, it's a little difficult, but uh, to ask Cheryl for her to, to show her her range of motion. But maybe uh, George would be good enough to show us how, he, how good his neck moves. And I have to say that this is after the first day. Out, coming out of surgery, I was already doing this. Oh my goodness! Whereas what? before, I was first having, day, right out of surgery. Wow. And prior to surgery, prior to surgery, I was having a hard time. In fact, if I put my neck back, I'd almost pass out. Wow! You know, so range of motion was bad. Wow! So even side to side was bothering, but especially going back like that. Wow. Whereas now, I have no problems. No problem at all. Thank you, George. Appreciate it. And I think you got a picture of George up yeah. on your screen yeah. too. This is uh, <clears throat> once again. This is a side view or what we call a lateral view in, in medicine uh, of uh, George's neck and the artificial discs that we put into his neck. Absolutely incredible. Great information. So I know you've enjoyed this show as much as I have, and I know that you've been taking your notes, writing down the phone numbers, and you're going to get a hold of Dr. Capicato today to find out what you could do to help yourself to have more mobility and have a better lifestyle. So remember, tune in again Saturdays at 4.30 in the afternoon and then Wednesday mornings at 11.30 a.m. And until next time, take that power and make a difference in your life today. We'll